In a previous video we have made balsa wood gliders, like this one. But not everyone can find balsa wood in hobby shops, so let's do another glider using foam board. This material is very easy to find and very cheap. For that we're going to use very basic tools and a sheet of foam board A3 size. Using a very simple plan that you can download from the description of the video, you will mark and measure everything to cut all the parts. To cut this material I recommend you using a new blade because it needs to be very sharp to do clean cuts. To direct the blade I use a metal roller because it's a lot easier and also be careful with your fingers because this blade is very sharp. These two parts will become the wings and now we're going to cut the fuselage, which is going to be this rectangular shape, but we're going to cut it in half to make it stronger. Before gluing these two parts together with some glue, I recommend putting some wood or a barbecue skewer to reinforce it even more. I forgot to do it before so I had to do it afterwards. Here I'm trying to round off the nose of the airplane, but it's not quite necessary. And finally I'm going to mark and cut the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. And now comes the part where you have to be very patient. We have to give the wings a shape of aerodynamic profile. And that's gonna be done cutting some material. Right now, if we look at the profile of our wings, it looks like this. So we have to cut the material to make it look like this. An aerodynamic airfoil. This way the wing will generate more lift and will be more aerodynamic. That's why we are going to use a very sharp blade. You have to be very careful, slowly and patiently. And also be careful with your fingers. And these are the results. I recommend rounding off the tips of the wings and make them thinner. The same applies to the stabilizers, but the profile is symmetrical, so you have to cut the same material on both sides. And now I'm going to make the dihedral of the wings. This will make the airplane more stable in flight. This is done by making a small incision to bend the wing. Then you put some CA glue to make the dihedral permanent, and that's the way it should look. The angle should be the same on both wings. And then it's time to put the stabilizers. This is very easy. I'm going to use CA glue with an accelerator to make it quicker. We have to make sure that the part of the fuselage where we're going to place the wing is aligned to the whole airplane. Remember that alignment is crucial to make the airplane fly very well. To direct the airplane or modify its flight pattern, we're going to place these small control surfaces. And now I'm going to reinforce the wing joint with some wood. And then we put the wing in position. We can glue it or use some tape. It's up to you how you join the wing to the fuselage. In my case, I used some string and tape. That way, if I want to modify something, it's easier for me. We are almost ready, but we must do the next step which is extremely important to make this airplane fly, and it's the valance. 
and to find the CG or center of gravity. To do that, we're going to use some coins or any other weight to put in our glider. This weight is going to be used and placed in the glider to balance it in the correct center of gravity. The center of gravity should be around here. To be more precise, at 30% of the quart of the wing from the leading edge to the trailing edge. To do that, we're going to put the coins in the correct position until it is balanced. Once the center of gravity is OK, now we can go out and fly. But that's not the only thing. We need to be very patient to make this fly correctly. Maybe we should add some weight. You can also modify the control surfaces to make it go up, down or to the left or right and so on. There are many details that you have to take care of to make it fly correctly. These first flights were not very successful. The airplane wasn't flying as I expected. So after tweaking the airplane a lot, like giving the wings a little bit more of camber, the airplane started to fly better. As I said, it takes a little bit of time and patience, but in the end it was flying okay. You can also experiment with flaps and moving the control surfaces to direct the flight. All this experimentation is part of the fun. I also did another glider based on the real glider DG1000. I have a template for this one that you can download from the description as well, but the fuselage was very big, heavy and generated too much drag. So that's why I don't recommend using this one. The wings are good though, so you can use the wings of this design. To complete this glider, I had to build a different fuselage, which is simpler and better. Another simple but very important detail that I didn't mention was to put a wedge in the front of the wing between the fuselage and the wing. That way it will tilt the wing a little bit up in a positive angle of attack. It should be just one or two millimeters maximum. To have a better experience flying these gliders, I recommend avoiding windy days. Finally, let's compare the weight between the balsa wood and this new glider. The balsa wood glider turns out to be a little bit heavier than the foam board glider, but the difference is extremely small, as you can see. But you will be surprised if I tell you that a heavier airplane or glider can fly even better sometimes than other lighter gliders. Of course, this depends on the flying conditions and many other factors, but I still like the balsa wood glider because it has a style and also flies very well. I've done these balsa wood gliders in past videos, I suggest you checking them out. Now, if this video reaches more than 1000 likes, I will make a video launching these gliders from a drone or another RC airplane and see how far they can fly, and I'll do other experiments with this kind of airplanes. For now, I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you in the next project.